Hello friends and welcome to the third episode of In-Depth Formula 1. In this video, we are going to talk about MQH. In the previous video, we have learned about internal combustion engines that is used in Formula 1 cars. And secondly, we have discussed about MGUK and now we are talking about MGH. As we already discussed in the previous videos, we are using a turbo hybrid engine in this era which means in our V6 engine, there is a turbocharger. We all know how a turbo works. If you don't know, I will tell. Turbocharger is a force induction system and it have two components, a compressor that is connected to the intake side of the engine and a turbine which is connected to the exhaust plenum. Compared to supercharger, which creates the energy for rotating the compressor from the engine itself, but in turbocharger, the energy will be created by the turbine by using the energy of the exhaust gases. The enthalpy and the kinetic energy of the exhaust gases will be converted into mechanical energy and fed to the compressor through a shaft. And by rotating the compressor, what happens is it will compress the air that is inducted into the engine and it will increase the density of the air and then it will be passed through an intercooler so uh, the temperature of the uh, fresh air will be cooled down for reducing the knocking inside a gasoline engine if you are preferring a gasoline engine which is similar to the formula one car engines and by using the intercooler uh, we will have a low temperature highly dense uh, fresh air highly dense means we have more oxygen in the engine so we can inject more fuel and produce more power easily Similar to this, the Formula 1 turbocharger also works in a similar way, but there are some differences. The Formula 1 car, MGUH, have additional components that make the engine and powertrain more efficient. So let's check what is the difference. In the conventional turbocharger, the compressor and the turbine are connected to the small shaft, as you can see in the left top side of the picture so that we can make the turbo charger more compact and we can easily install it in a tighter package just like an engine uh, that is used in a formula one car or in a hyper car but mercedes powertrain made some differences that differences made a huge revolution and made them the dominator in the turbo hybrid era we know that the turbine used in the turbocharger is working against a high immense pressure and temperature of the exhaust gases and it is in a uh, similar way and it is near the compressor which is uh, taking fresh air. So there will be lots of chances for the heat from the turbine to transfer into the compressor. So we have to make more load for or more work to convert or to reduce the temperature of the fresh air that is getting inside the combustion chamber to take part in the combustion process. The difference made by Mercedes MG Petronas was uh, they made a longer shaft for connecting the turbine and compressor. So it made a longer distance between the turbine and compressor and it made it impossible for the heat transfer from the turbine side to the compressor. So they reduced the heat transfer from the turbine to compressor so they don't need to use that much effort for reducing the temperature of the fresh air that is injected into the engine. And we know that there are lots of disadvantages for a normal turbo charger. And the disadvantages is one is the turbo lag. And for getting rid of this turbo lag, we can use smaller turbo charger. But smaller turbo chargers have less weight and less inertia effects and they can uh, give the boost pressure at a very low RPM also. But uh, the main disadvantage of the smaller turbo charger is at high RPM, they will over boost. So for getting rid of these disadvantages, for reducing turbo lag, we can use a VGT and for reducing overboost at higher RPM, we can use a Vestigate system. But using a Vestigate, we will be uh, just just wasting the exhaust energy. We know that our internal combustion engines are not that efficient, so uh, we will be lost heat through the exhaust gas as well. So using a turbo charger is another chance to recover the exhaust heat to produce some work and to increase the thermal efficiency of the overall internal combustion engine package. So uh, if we are using a waste gate, we will be wasting the high heat energy at very high engine RPMs. And the Formula 1 car turbo charger is able to spool up up to 1 lakh revolution per minute. It's an F1 engine, so it must not waste energy. That's why we are using a motor generator unit with heat recovery system. In this system, with the turbine and compressor, we have an additional component, which is a motor generator unit. Similar to the MGUK, it can work as motor and generator too. At the beginning speed or by starting acceleration, we can use the energy from the battery pack 
to drive the motor for reducing the turbo lag and to provide higher acceleration for the vehicle. And at high engine RPMs where the exhaust energy is so much high and we are not wasting the energy to a waste gate but we are converting the mechanical energy in the inside the turbine and it will be fed to the generator at that time the motor generator unit will be acting as a generator to convert the mechanical energy into electrical energy and this electrical energy will be stored in the battery and this electrical energy can be used for propelling the vehicle to forward by using the MGUK and it can also be used for reducing turbo lag at engine starting this is how a formula one turbo charger works in the uh, all turbo charger unit the MGU will be placed in between the turbine and compressor unit as you can see in the picture by combining the 1.6 liter V6 engine with the MGUK and MGH the most efficient engine on the planet is one which is the F1 car engine this is how MGUH works and if you love this video, please don't forget to give a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel to get updated in the automotive industry. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day and bye.